You guys, X-Men Red, issue number 5, part 3 of Judgment Day. The Battle of Araco. Uranus the Undying. One hour. Complete devastation. I cannot tell you how freaking amazing this issue is. This is exactly what I wanted from this tie-in. We are shown exactly what transpired on Araco. Taking place during Judgment Day issue number one, we get to see the fate of the Great Ring. And I cannot emphasize this enough. If you are not keeping up with Judgment Day, I promise you, you are freaking missing out from one of the best things to come out of 2022. Cause holy crap. Subscribe to the channel, like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we are picking up on Planet Araco at the Great Ring. T-minus one minute before Uranus makes landfall. Before he is teleported in by the machine. Abigail Brand has come to the Great Ring, giving them warning, letting them know that Destiny has seen the Eternals attacking. This is something that is going to affect all mutant kind. And on the Great Ring, they do have an Omega Seer, much like Destiny herself. But she has no intention of letting them know anything. She simply sees and lets it unfold before them. Believing that interfering is the wrong course of action. The events need to play out exactly as they are. More or less confirming that this attack is imminent. Iska the Unbeaten. She has to ask the question, where is Storm? Where is the region of Soul? Of course, she is down with the Quiet Council, which is something that we haven't seen yet. We haven't seen her at all in either of these books. Anything that has gone on with Judgment Day, Storm has been missing from the equation. With only 15 seconds before Uranus gets here, the timer they are completely unaware of, they have no idea how imminent this attack is. Cable starts to draw out the battle plan, lets us know who our enemies are, what they are capable of, and how they are going to have to combat this. He knows that they're probably going to do a psychic attack against Krakoa. He knows that they do not want Araco being able to come to the rescue of Krakoa. So he believes that whatever they do send at them, it is going to be drastic. It is going to be an entire arsenal, more than likely an overwhelming force. As the timer gets down to zero, we see the blinding blue light. Uranus is coming. As the Great Ring prepares for this battle, Magneto lets Iska the Unbeaten know that she needs to be ready. With her power, she is going to have to be the first one to act if they are going to ensure their victory in this battle. The only problem with this, this is Iska the Unbeaten. Her mutant power is to not lose even when that means switching sides. Not the first time that she has ever done this. Definitely not gonna be the last. We see her go against the Great Ring, decapitating one of the members known as Idol, recognizing that as she has switched sides, that means somebody has to take her off the board. In a moment, we see Nightcrawler Poof grab hold of her, and the two of them disappear. And this is when the Undying greets the mutants, letting them know that they have deviated excessively. And he has been given one hour to correct this. The armories of Uranus have been deployed, committing almost all of their forces. 11,000 mutants have already died, and that is in the first 30 seconds. Above the skies, all across the Rocco, the sky shimmers. We see weapons, armadas, coming from all over. Different weapons, different doomsday devices that Uranus has been keeping in these armories. From the Morrow lands all the way to the skies, Araco is under a full-scale invasion. These attacks are coordinated. They are perfectly timed. The mutants of Araco have no opportunity to regroup and fight back. It is just a matter of surviving this assault. The mutant known as Aura, the giant eyeball, the Omega Seer, letting Uranus know that the eye of the law is upon him, trying to make him stop, trying 
saying to cease what he is doing. Uranus is unfazed, knocking Aura straight to the ground. This is where we have the arrival of freaking Legion. Uranus believing that he looks very interesting. Legion tells him outside. The two of them flying up into space. This gives the members of the Great Ring an opportunity to regroup as they are trying to assess everything that is going on. In the matter of 35 freaking seconds, we see Uranus return back down to the surface, and Legion is gone. Lotus supplying Magneto with as much metal as he can possibly take on. He shoots a continuous wall of shrapnel directly towards Uranus. And this is actually a very, a very rare occasion. The mutants of Arako, they're not one to do circuits. Circuits is when two mutants get together and they combine their powers, making them more powerful, making them do feats they never thought they could do, such as terraforming Mars or being able to resurrect people, such as the Five. What is even more rare is when we have Omega circuits like Magneto and Lotus. The truth is though, this battle has already been lost. Iska the Unbeaten had turned on them immediately. Legion was taken out in half a freaking minute. It is only a matter of survival at this point. Over the course of the next couple of minutes, we have the Brotherhood of Arako who is putting up their fight. Nova is dueling in his fight. Iska the Unbeaten has gotten rid of Nightcrawler. She finds herself in the ocean being trapped by a monster, the one known as Sobinar, as she tries to free herself. Magneto is trying with all of his power to be able to hold Uranus, wrapping him in as much metal as he possibly can. Between the magnetism and the telekinesis, they are actually being able to fight him. He even believes that this is impressive. Unfortunately, it is just not enough. Uranus breaking free from this metal in a matter of seconds. He is on top of Magneto and his fist goes straight through the chest of Magneto. 13 minutes and 23 seconds. That is when Magneto falls in this battle. This is when Cable calls in his big gun, the Omega-1 Pulse Rifle, the most powerful gun in Cable's entire arsenal. In the year 3877, this weapon is classified as a weapon of absolute destruction and it is banned from wartime use. The only thing it does is weaken Uranus. Bleeding from his mouth a little bit, he is still able to crack a smile and ask Cable if that is all. After three and a half minutes of constant firing, the Omega-1 overheats and it jams up. All across the globe, Arako is losing. It is chaos, it is destruction, it is mayhem. Abigail Brand easily being taken off the board. On the dark side of the planet, we have the Fisher King who can feel the wind change. And he knows that it is time. At exactly 20 minutes, at the Great Ring, there is nothing but silence. Yoran is still having 40 minutes left. Instead of trying to kill the entire planet, he spends the next 40 minutes making a decoration. 98% of all mutants within a 50 mile radius have been killed. He uses their skeletons to make a giant X decoration to let it be known that he is coming for all of them. Uranus never being one to go back and ensure that his work is complete. This ego, it might just be the downfall of the Eternals. Because rising up from all of these ashes, we have Xylo who is waking up Lotus being able to protect him, even going as far as apologizing to him because hiding can be seen as cowardice. But they know that they were completely outmatched, that it was the wise tactic moving forward. Aura, our giant eyeball, is still alive. Uranus's weapons are left unchecked, still pillaging this planet. And this is where we hear the voice, letting Lotus know that what is going on is a loss. And Lotus does not sit in the seat of loss. The one that sits in that seat is freaking Magneto. Seeing him rise up, a hole still in his chest, it is glowing a bright pink. And it is time for the seat of loss 
to take command. What comes next is the hour of Magneto, and that will be the end of this issue. So holy crap, what do you guys think? Obviously, I freaking loved it. When I saw that Iska the Unbeaten turned against them, I literally, out loud, was like I freaking knew it. I think a lot of us did see that coming. It was inevitable. Iska the Unbeaten, she has that name for a reason. When the odds are stacked against them, she will, she will flip on you on a freaking dime. No hesitation, no question about it. It's crazy that she is even on the Great Ring. The problem is, no one can beat her in combat. At least nobody smart enough has tried to beat her in combat. But man, would I hate to have her on the Great Ring. Right when you need her, right when things are about to get real, she cuts off somebody's head, causes immediate chaos. And if that's not enough, Uranus in 20 freaking minutes wipes the floor of all these Omegas like it is absolutely nothing. Now, not all of them are Omegas, but most of them on the Great Ring are Omega Mutants. And then Legion. Like, I really expected something. I'm really disappointed that they didn't show us the fight. They didn't show us the confrontation between the two of them. Because, man, would that be a freaking sight to see. But if Uranus can wipe Legion in 30 seconds, what hope does mutant kind truly have? Like, that's freaking Legion. I can't believe that they took him off the board that quickly. This was an absolute massacre. A freaking bloodbath. Uranus ran through them like they were freaking nothing. Now, to be fair, this was not necessarily a surprise attack, but it came a lot quicker and a lot harder before they had any kind of true defensive strategy. They were honestly looking at all of the other Eternals, not thinking about someone like Uranus. Most of them have never even heard that name, but Magneto still being alive, rising up from the freaking dead, the Eternals are going to pay. They are going to wish that Uranus had double checked because Magneto is going to bring down hell on top of them. One thing I really wish that we had gotten before this event kicked off was to truly understand the powers and abilities of those on the Great Ring. Like Lotus and a few other individuals, we don't really know the true extent to the their powers. Iska the Unbeaten, her powers aren't even necessarily fully explained. That's not to say that they haven't gave us at least a general understanding of her abilities, but when it comes to all the other members of the Great Ring, we have barely gotten anything on the giant eyeball, let alone people like Lotus and Xylo and all of the others. So that is one thing that I definitely would have loved to see explored a little bit more. I've said it over the last couple of issues, and I'm going to continue to say it. This is the best event of 2022. The Immortal X-Men and X-Men Red, hands down, the best titles that have been coming out of X-Men. Pretty sure I've been covering X-Men for, for almost two years now. And these are probably the most exciting issues that I have read. Judgment Day is such a phenomenal event. And we are only on part three. This event is going through all the way through August, all the way through September, and all the way through freaking October. We are gonna get so much and I can only imagine what we are going to see on the other side. What the X-Men titles are going to look like once this war has finally reached its end. Now, the next issue, continuing on Judgment Day, is going to be Avengers X-Men Eternals Judgment Day issue number two. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to get caught up on everything going on in this event, be sure to check out the playlist in my description as well as the top of this video. It is going to be in reading order and is going to get you caught up on everything happening with Judgment Day. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by hitting the super thanks button. This button will let you donate directly to the channel and every little bit helps us out. Now if you can't do that, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and until the next breakdown.